Coming up next, the worst career question you could ever ask someone. And then, uh uh-oh, there's some legislation in Congress on a four-day work week. We'll tell you about it. And, of course, we take your calls, and it starts right now. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you win in work and in life. How do we do that? First of all, we help you figure out what a purposeful role is, a role you were designed to do. Then we help you get in, we help you move up. And when you're winning in your work, you're winning in life. It's going to help you in so many different areas. So that is the conversation. It's about you. It is unique in that we allow you to call in toll-free number on the screen there. It will be shortly. It is, uh, excuse me, 844-747-2577. Okay. Uh, big announcement coming up a little bit later. You're going to have a super fun customized show tomorrow on one of the hottest button issues we've ever taken on on this show. More about that in our next segment. But first, the worst career question you could ask someone, what is it? This is something that needs to be addressed. And this is going to feel a little picky today, but it needs to be picky. Because words matter. And words assembled improperly and positioned improperly create a mindset. So what's the worst question you could ask someone when it comes to this idea of a career? A body of time in which you work? What do you want to do when you grow up? That's the question. It seems harmless. Come on, Ken. Dude, relax. Chill out, Ken. You're taking things a little too serious. Okay. Am I? I don't know. You be the judge. I don't mind. Let me unpack this. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Susie. What do you want to be when you grow up? You ask that five-year-old. It's a cute, awesome answer. Six, seven, eight, nine. Then we start asking kids... A little bit more seriously. All right. They start to feel this pressure. They start to feel this pressure of this one thing. It creates an early experience, an early emotion with what's this thing I'm going to do? There's already enough pressure that kids are going to begin to face starting in the ninth grade in the American education system where they got a GPA, got to get all those points, got to do well on the pre-SAT or ACT so you can practice to take the big one because that GPA and ACT or SAT score is the key to your future. This is how much importance we put on it. Now, I am not in any way suggesting that it is not important to have a nice GPA and do well on a college entrance exam. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm saying we put too much pressure on it. Because you know my position on this if you've watched this show for any length of time. College isn't the only way to success. And frankly, parents, you got to have the guts to confront the two basic questions that reveal whether or not it is the right path. Is it the only way for your kid to do what they want to do? Is it the best way to do what they want to do? So this question, what do you want to do when you grow up is harmless. It is absolutely harmless. And I'm not saying we have to remove it. I'm saying you better keep it to the five to six year old and stop wondering with your kids and other kids about that answer. And instead, we need to reshape it. Here's why. It puts a job in front of purpose. It limits their pathways. It begins to push the idea that your identity is found in a title. This is the danger. And for those of you who thought at first, Ken, relax a little, Sparky. Now you're starting to see this. 
I want you just for a moment, if you would just, if you would just humor me, I want you to just for a moment think back to a time when you felt limited to only one specific path of work. I want you to think back to a time, or are you in it now, where you've never thought of work as purposeful, but just functional. It's just a J-O-B. That's how I look at work. I want you to think back to a time where your identity was wrapped up in a title and you just knew it wasn't right. You felt like an imposter because you're going, this is my identity, but this isn't who I am. Here's the question that we really need to develop and to ask and to support the answer finding to this question. Who do you want to become? What kind of person do you want to be? Oh, now why is this good? Well, first, it's limitless. Second, it absolutely begins to introduce the idea of purpose, even when they may not even know what it is or be able to put it in context. But they begin to see something higher for themselves than a career and a job. That's the issue. Then your identity is properly placed on not just what you do, but who you are and how you do it. They all combine. That's healthiness. Because you are more than professional purpose, but you do have professional purpose, but you have relational purpose. And let me just be very clear in case anybody wonders, I think relational purpose is the foundation of everything. It's more important than professional purpose. If somebody came to me and said, Ken, my personal life is a mess, but I also don't know what I want to do with my life. What do I focus on first? I'm going to absolutely go, let's get the personal life cleaned up. It's not even a choice for me. It's automatic. However, I believe the secret sauce to a wholly lived, fulfilled life is relational and professional purpose. There is great dignity. There is great significance in being who you're supposed to be, the best version of who you're supposed to be relationally. But there's also unbelievable dignity and unbelievable significance in being who you're supposed to be professionally. And that is the whole person contributing 360 degrees uniquely to the people that have been put in our path. This is, I mean, think about this stuff. This is not like brain surgery, rocket science stuff here. And yet we aren't taught to think this way. We don't intentionally see ourselves as the whole person. We need to be healthy and whole and intentional, relationally and professionally. So, hey, parents, have conversations with your kids about who they want to become. Much better conversation. Going to yield so much more. And let them just explore. Stop trying to control and channel and push. Don't move. Your call's coming up. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Did you know recruiters take an average of six seconds to scan a resume? And that's if they ever see it in the first place. In fact, 75% of resumes are rejected before reaching a hiring manager. Listen, folks, if you want to get hired, you've got to make sure your resume is getting noticed. That's why we created How to Write the Perfect Resume. This free guide will walk you through the five steps to stand out in the hiring process and land your dream job. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash resume. All right, folks, welcome back to the Kid Coleman Show. Hey, uh, big announcement. I'm super excited about tomorrow's show. Uh, the theme of tomorrow's entire show here is should you skip college? Oh, this one always gets the old conversation fired up uh, on the Instagram and the Facebook. Uh, my special guest is Connor Boyack. 
He's the author of the book, Skip College, Launch Your Career Without Debt, Distractions, or a Degree. And so we're going to be talking about several things, new trends, alternatives to the degree, and how that affects you, because I am a man of the people. I am here for you. So this young man is sharp. And uh, Alex, the producer, and I, we, we, we're, we're really excited about this. So here's why I'm telling you about it ahead of time. And I'll be talking about it on Instagram and Facebook. Um, if you have a very specific question, you are a parent and your kid is waffling, maybe you're unsure about this, it really freaks you out and scares you that your kid has come to you and said, hey, I don't think I'm going to go to college. I don't think I need it. Uh, that's okay for you to be uncertain. It's okay for that to worry you. Let's dig in. Uh, between the two of us, uh, Connor and I can, can, can answer your question and give you some perspective. Uh, if you are a young person who hey, you've been in college for a year and you just go, this isn't for me, I'm worried about what my mom and dad are going to say, or I'm just worried about my future if I were to give up on college and move somewhere else, I need some confirmation. I think tomorrow's show is perfect for you as well. And we will open up the phone lines for Connor and I to take your calls. So if you've got a question about that, uh, tune in tomorrow live, 12 Eastern Standard Time, 11 Central, 844-747-2577. You can also email Amanda, ask at KenColeman.com. You say, hey, I want to be on the show tomorrow, and she'll set it all up uh, because we're going to focus on that conversation. So we want to kind of clear the decks for those calls. So spread the word. It's going to be a really, really fun show. I think we're going to, I think we're going to set some stuff on fire that needs to be burned. Uh, so really excited about that. Don't miss tomorrow's episode, Should You Skip College, is our focus. 844-747-2577 is the number. Uh, comment in the chat room right now on YouTube. Caleb Colin says, wish I would have skipped college and just did the coding boot camp that I put off until 31. Slow clap for Caleb, acknowledging all he needed to do was go to a coding boot camp hey no regrets though caleb now you're on the right track he's 31 years of age when he takes the coding boot camp here's the deal this is a great example parents if your kid is really really wildly talented in coding and programming and just a whiz on all the computer stuff and technology and they want to do this put them in a coding boot camp put them in three or four coding programs it's going to be a fraction of the time and money for college and they're going to, A, be doing what they love, and B, making really good money really early on. And if they're investing that wisely, we're talking about millionaires in their 30s. Come on, parents. Are you ashamed of that? Or would you like to share that story at the block party in the neighborhood? Yeah, how's Johnny doing? Well, he's in his second year working for XYZ Tech Company. He didn't go to state college. Uh, we put him through a um, coding boot camp. Would you believe the kid got hired? He's making fifty-two thousand dollars his first year, and he's now um, in his third year. Going to make six figures this year. Looking, looking at a promotion, unbelievable. Four hundred one k's busting out. We got an investing strategy. I mean, or does it want to be? Well, uh, Johnny's in his third year at State. Doing pretty good. Grades pretty good. Trying to pay for it. You know, we pay for some student loans. He's going to have to really bust it. I'm really concerned about what he's going to do when he gets out. Job market for graduating college kids kind of tough, kind of topsy-turvy. But you know what? He's at a good school. Got a good degree. I think things are going to work out. Now, which story do you want to tell? Pretty easy for me. This is real, by the way. 844-747-2577. Let's go to Raquel in Leesburg, Virginia, up in northern Virginia. Raquel, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. How are you today? I'm living the dream. What's going on with you? Okay, so I'll make this quick. Um, I applied for and was um, given the opportunity to do an internal transfer. I'm in subcontracts now, and this new position is in finance. It is a labor grade lateral move. However, within our company, you know, within the labor grade, you've got your minimum, your median, and then you've got your max as far as the salary range goes. So my question to you is, should I even with my, this as we're negotiating details about this new position, should I even ask for an addition to my raise? I mean, not a raise salary, I mean. Should I be asking for an increase in salary? Um, did they, at, so you applied for it. I did. And, and they've officially offered it. 
they have officially offered it. We haven't discussed salary yet, um, but they have officially said, we want to bring you on. Okay. We're doing, you know, we're talking internally about how we are going to internally make that transfer. Great. Um, so, yes. Okay, so <clears throat> I understand the organizational piece where it's on the same mm-hmm. level, I guess, from a seniority or org chart, but it's in a different department. It and uh, they haven't brought up pay yet, which is great. No. So when they bring it up, um, here's what I want you to do. First of all, I think it's okay to ask for it, and I think you should. Okay. I think you should. Okay. So let me walk you through two things. First, have you, and if you have it, you need to do the research on what the salary range is for this type of position, uh, whatever you can learn based on experience, blah, 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 blah. But it'd be really nice for you to be armed with that information. Okay. Have you done that? I've done that a little little bit. Someone who is in that position now told me her range, which is similar to the range because we're the same labor grade, but she said she was middle, she was to the right of middle, which is where I am in my current position for that same labor grade. Um, so would you take it? So, Would you take this current job, if they sit down with you tomorrow and they go, here's what Mm -hmm. we're going to offer you, and it was exactly where you are now, just to the right, so in between top and medium, would you take it? Yeah, I mean, I would take it if they said, we're not going to, I mean, you're going to keep your salary. I I would still take it. Okay, then I would definitely Um, ask for it, and that's going to change your posture. Okay. Okay. Because it's not a walk away thing for you, so it's not going to come across that way. You're very nice. No, uh-uh. You're a very nice, decent woman. Anyway, I can tell. So I don't think there's any risk in asking for it. I would ask for the top of the range. I would say, hey, uh, I'm excited about this opportunity internally. Obviously, that's why I looked at it because I want to grow professionally. Isn't mm-hmm. that true? Yes, absolutely. And I would say in the so in that second breath, I'm, I'm excited. I, I I'm, thank you so much uh, because I want to grow professionally. I want to grow here, and I know that mm-hmm. adding more value is the way to do that. And of course, growing professionally means growing financially. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and this is after they've told you what they're going to offer you and say, would you all consider, are you open to um, a, a bump to this number and give them a specific number? Say I did some research on it and that's the range. And, and I just be wonder if you'd be willing to consider it super humble, okay. but very specific. Okay. And don't Be say I need and okay. yeah, don't say I need this to take it. Just say would you consider I did some research on the range here. Would you consider a bump with this or is this the max that you all can offer? And okay. I certainly understand if it is, but I just wanted to ask. You know what I mean? I, I would right. just put it out there. I'm so grateful. Okay. And, and, and and if they say that's the max, then I would follow up with, Okay, what does growth look like? Because mm-hmm. in taking this, I want to grow, and so I understand we can't do it now. Can we can we discuss a growth plan that would be measured that would tie into comp increases? But this okay. is all based on, Raquel, you knowing what your company's like, and do they do this, mm-hmm. or do they just kind of do the standard 3% raise across the board for everybody if, if, they do, if they've done well? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do they do performance-based right. mm-hmm. comp plans? They really don't. I mean, so, maybe certain functions do. Yeah. Um, so but, I think you got to you got to go in this yeah. thing. Okay, knowing that you don't mm-hmm. have a lot of wiggle room. So I think the right. way I think the the most comfortable you feel, in just nicely, humbly, gratefully, addressing a potential bump. See how they react. We, you and I, know is you're going to take it regardless. So let that. Let that color your posture. Let that kind of wash over you, and I think you'll be okay. I don't think you're going to do anything wrong there. Good question. Don't move. More of the Ken Coleman Show coming right up. You were created to fill a unique role in and through your work. Now, some of you may be going, I have no idea what that is. Some of you may be saying, I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to get there. I felt all of those emotions. I've been where you are, and I can tell you, there's hope. That's why I wrote the book, From Paycheck to Purpose. You can make the income you want and the impact that you desire, and I know that you have what it takes.
All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you win at work and in life. Well, we got some fun stuff coming up in 2022. Oh, boy, are we going to do We're, we're going to do some rearranging. You know, my kids hate. My kids, I, I never I never felt this way when I was a kid. But my kids hate when we rearrange stuff around the house. Stacy and I, we get a little burr in our saddle all the time. You know? Well, let's move this couch over here. Let's do this. Yeah, we do that. And my kids drives them nuts. Um, I but 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 I like change. And I I don't know. But I don't know if you're like me, but but I'm a guy who always loves a new year for trying new things and 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 new techniques and new products and you know all kinds of stuff. I'm also going to be trying some coffee. Some different coffee I've been looking up. Supposedly there's like this pure coffee supposed to give me like extra energy like I need extra energy but I, I think I do so anyway uh we're doing some fun things on the show we're gonna add some really fun elements and do some really cool stuff so uh spread the word hey if you want to win at life and work Ken Coleman you got to check that guy out he's a little over caffeinated uh hey uh for those of you who are thinking about moving because uh, oh I got some numbers team uh This is fun. I was just getting ready to extol the virtues of ZipRecruiter, the number one hiring site in the United States. And I was flipping through the old cable news channels last night, which I don't do very often. All the kids were preoccupied. And I flip on CNN, and who's there? CEO of ZipRecruiter. That was fun. And uh, they threw on the screen the new graphic from uh, October report. 4.2 million people left. So we had a slight decrease. So quick review, August, 4.3 million people left their jobs. September, 4.4. October, 4.2. So is this, are the musical chairs starting to slow down? Eh, We don't know. 100,000 people, while that's a huge number, (laughs) pales in comparison to 4.2 million people changed jobs in October. So, the point is, a lot of you are still moving. More people are thinking about moving. It ain't going to go from 4.2 to 200,000 people in November. So, here's the deal. You have got to consider and use ZipRecruiter as a tool if you're moving. You don't have time to submit 50 resumes a day. First of all, that's an awful strategy anyway. But you do have less than five minutes to go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken, fill out a profile, upload your resume, and I highly recommend the Ken Coleman Show resume. You can get that at KenColeman.com. And let them go to work for you. They have companies that are paying them for access to you. They update you every time a company looks at your profile, every time a company likes your profile, and asks for your contact information. How are companies seeing you? Because ZipRecruiter's technology and their team are pitching you Two companies who have open positions that Zip believes your profile is a good fit for. And you're doing your thing during the day. What are you doing? Did I mention it's free? I didn't. It's free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Check it out. All right. uh, You know why I'm a man of the people? Because I tell you that I think things are coming and to be aware of them and they happen. Because I'm paying attention. I said that the four-day work week was going to not be an anomaly. It wasn't going to be an idea. It was going to be a thing. Let's get to it in the news. All right. Business Insider publishes this uh, article that I'm about to read a bit from. Progressives in Congress are backing a bill for a four-day work week. Now, you conservatives out there, relax. Take a sip of tea, would you please? This is not a political segment. Don't freak out. You just need to be aware of this. The Congressional Progressive Caucus just endorsed the aptly named 32-Hour Workweek Act. Representative Mark Ticano, who is a Democrat who represents California's 41st Congressional District, is the sponsor. Uh, There were 100 legislators um, behind this. And uh, the statement is far too long. 
Workers across this country have been forced to put in longer hours as their wages barely budge. This is from a Washington State Democrat representative, Pramila Jayapal. Well, wages have gone up, so that's not accurate, but we'll, we'll keep moving. Uh, what's it based on? Where's the precedent? Who's doing it outside of America? Because in just a moment, I'm going to tell you why I think this is going to be a big, big challenge and kind of stumble along in America. I'll explain that in a minute. Iceland did a pilot of the four-day work week, and it did not lead to a drop in productivity. So that's good news. For those of you excited about a four-day work week, Iceland did a pilot, and productivity didn't drop. But it did result, this is positive, in workers reporting less stress and burnout, and higher levels of positivity and happiness. So you can't argue with that. Very interesting. Now, who, now th- this is, these are the countries that are on the pilot train right now. Scotland, Japan, and Sweden are all trialing a concept of the four-day work week. Um, and then the United Arab Emirates just announced that their federal government employees will be moving. This is not a pilot. They will be moving to a four-and-a-half-day work week starting January 1, 2022. Check this out. The weekend kicks off at noon on Fridays. So they're kind of straddling this, and they're going to the four-and-a-half-day work week. Um, And they believe it's going to boost productivity and improve work-life balance. So there you go. Now, before you get all hot and bothered, we're going to four-day work week. Woo! Before you get all too excited about that, I think there are some distinct challenges um, with this idea catching on here in America. I'm not saying it's not. I, I think there's some challenges. and It might might not go as quickly as you might think. We'll see. I don't know. One is you just think about the organizational structure of companies. Now, one of the things I, I, I saw some data last night that I, I was surprised by, given all of the talk, uh, and, and all the articles out there on people that are working from home, um, post-pandemic, uh, or where we are now, whether you think we're post or not, don't read into that, please. Um, 12% of American workers are working from home. I, I, I would have thought it was higher. I really would have. But that 12% is a big jump pre-pandemic. I think it was like 3 to 4% of workers were, were remote. So now we've jumped up into double digits and it's 12%. I would have thought it was higher, frankly, given all the things I read about it. Uh, So that's interesting. And that solidifies my reasoning for believing this is going to take some time. Even where we sit now, wrapping up 2021, only 12% of American workers are remote. So it's not this big, massive, like, like if it were 45%, I, th- I think there's a greater chance. So there's an organizational structure that's going to, there's a lot of rethinking companies are going to have to do. Okay. Uh, a lot of communication with workers. Like, how is this going to, how, how's this going to work? There's the day-to-day function of communication, not just the structure. And then companies are going to have to feel confident that they can measure productivity. I mean, if you just take public companies alone, we're talking about billions of dollars riding on what investors think and profit reports and you you just willy-nilly start moving like this, it could wholesale cause mass chaos and real profit loss. So for that reason, I think it's going to take some time to ramp up, but I do think the four-day work week is here and I don't think it's going anywhere. So uh, to me, don't bank on it. Watch for it. And I will still say, even if your company adopts it, If you want it to stick, you better crush it. You better get more done in less time, or it will go away. I promise you that. But, hey, please, don't you go away. We're coming right back. You were created to fill a unique role in this world. 
but figuring out what that is can feel overwhelming. That's why we created the Get Clear Career Assessment. In less than 15 minutes, you'll get customized results that clarify and verify what you do best, the work you love, and the results you want to produce. You'll even get a list of professional possibilities to help you jumpstart the job search. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash assessment. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Just taking a quick dive into the uh, chat room comments. Everybody that's watching live right now that's engaging in the chat room, if you're watching live and you're not in the chat room, look at all these folks. It's fantastic. CMCSS1, Merry Christmas, Ken Coleman team. Merry Christmas back to you. I'm a sucker right now for anybody that says Merry Christmas. Just say Merry Christmas. Don't say Happy Holidays to me. Say Merry Christmas. Because Thanksgiving's already gone. So I don't want to know happy holidays. By the way, I want to say happy Thanksgiving. I'm old school that way. I want to hear Merry Christmas. Christmas is awesome. So there you go. I just got an idea. You know what we need to do here on the show? We need to do a gift exchange. we got to figure that out. Alex may not like the idea. I'm throwing it out there. Uh, kind of a silly gift exchange on camera. It'd be kind of fun. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I think it'll be fun. Uh, let's see. Mike A says wages have gone up right along with the cost of living these days. He's talking about our last segment, uh, where we talked about the four day work week, uh, sipping tea. My daughter is 25 and works in technology, making six figures. Whoa. I love that. Bethel tech. That's why I endorse Bethel tech. Your kid wants to get into technology. You want to get in technology and you're going, Ken, I can't afford a degree. I don't have the time. You don't need it for less than 15 grand. And nine months of online hustle. Bethel Tech's placement rate is nearly 75% of their students are getting placed immediately or within days of finishing the program. And their starting salary is in the 68000 range with a nice two-year path to six figures. BethelTech.net. BethelTech.net. Call them. Tell them Ken Coleman sends you. They'll take really good care of you. Uh, let's see here. Before we get back here, let's look, 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 look. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Toy shop. Where's that one at? Uh, oh, here we go. Dropped out of a four-year degree and went to a tech program for machining. Seven years later, I'm getting close to six figures. And this is in all caps. No school loans. And listen to this. Machine shops are desperate for good people. Ain't that the truth? Toy shop. 96.65. Well, I like that user name. I like that. Toy Shop 9665. It's got a little got a little, uh, little intrigue behind it. Hey, thanks for sharing that testimony. That's fantastic. By the way, that reminds me, tomorrow's episode, full episode, focusing on should you skip college? For some of you, the answer is unequivocally yes. My guest, Connor Boyack, author of the book Skip College, Launch Your Career Without Debt, Distractions or Degree. Boy, are we going to be on fire. Those are the calls we're taking tomorrow. So bookmark that. If you've got some real questions, tactical questions, maybe you just need to verify your plans, your feelings, all that stuff. Tomorrow's show, it is a special show. Special show. Okay? And we're going to unpack this. This young man has written a fantastic book on this, and so he's deeper in the weeds than I am. But I, if boy, if you've been following me, you know I care deeply about this issue. If it's not the only way or the best way, the answer is skip college. What are you afraid of? What, what are you afraid of? Well, people are going to talk about me behind their back. and They're going to talk about my kid. They're going to do this. And they're going to say this and, 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 and all this kind of stuff. Listen, I don't care what people think. I don't care. I have zero that I care about when it relates to my future, what I should be doing, and how I'm going to get there. And you should be the same way, and then more importantly, parents, for your kids, what's the best path for your kids? I mean, look, you look at this. We, we, had, we had the sipping tea comment, okay? 
We get, we, you know, look, technology is as hot as it gets. 25 year old daughter, make it six figures. Who doesn't want to brag about that? At the family reunion, at church in the lobby. So tomorrow we're clearing the decks. I'm, I'm telling you now, you want to call in tomorrow and ask questions around this, my co-host, he's a guest, but we're going to co-host this thing. Sit here at the desk, take your calls, social media questions, a whole nine yards. Connor Boyack, author of the book, Skip College, Launch Your Career Without Debt, Distractions, or Degree. Here's the deal. I think this is maybe one of the single most important things I will ever do in my career is help people get to a place where they realize they don't have to go to college. Hey, that music means I got to get out of here. Oh, wait, no, I got one more. I got one more segment. I got so distracted. I'm so fired up. Don't go anywhere. We still have more show, more calls coming up. This is the Ken Coleman Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. I got so excited in the last segment. You ever had, you ever had, you ever do that? You're like, oh my gosh, I got, I got to wrap up. I got to get out of here. Oh, then you find out, oh, I got more time. So I feel like we got bonus time today. 844-747-2577. Let's get back to the phones. Uh, Katie is on the line in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Katie, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for having me. You bet. Um, so... I've been in a finance career going on 20 years now since I graduated from college, and I really have no complaints. I think it aligns well with my talents. But the issue I'm faced with is I have this passion project that I've been really trying to work on and gain momentum over the past three years. And I have two little kids, and I'm just having a really hard time finding the time to, to devote to my passion project because this career I have is just taking all my mental space and energy and Mm. any free time I have is really devoted to my kids. So I'm just trying to figure out a way that I can carve out time to gain momentum on this passion project of mine. Okay. Is, I want you to tell me what the passion project is and then is the goal for it to eventually be your full-time income or is it just something you always want to kind of keep on the side and whatever money you make is gravy? It is. I'm trying to tip the scale so that eventually I can monetize this passion project and well is, it is my- but but it is what it is the goal to f- be full-time or it is just side money full-time okay and what is it, it so i've been writing a blog um it's focused on, on moms and handling stress mm-hmm. amidst all the pressures of motherhood so okay, okay. i've been writing content and and trying to develop courses so so have you actually published the blog it's out there Nope, I have not. Um, okay. It's just trying to find the time to get to that point where I can actually publish it. <laughs> have you already written stuff? I have. I have. Okay. Now, this is going to sound like I'm picking on you. I'm not. I'm going to be your coach for a moment. If you want me to coach you, do you want me to coach you? Yes, please do. You have a false narrative in your head. Okay. You've told yourself you don't have enough time to publish a blog, and yet you also told me you've already written stuff. So it would take right. exactly, let me be realistic. Sometimes I get a little excitable. It would take you less than 30 minutes to sign up, pay for, launch a basic blog template and post whatever amount of articles you have. It would take you less than 30 minutes. Do you have 30 minutes? To post what you've already written? I do. You have to show your work. If you don't start on a very small level, I mean teeny tiny steps, the first live broadcast, Katie, that I ever did 
was high school football, play-by-play, and it wasn't even on the radio. It was on a website in this local town of Noonan, Georgia, and two people heard it. The kid next to me and my wife, because she's a really good woman. Mm -hmm. But I had to start somewhere. What's holding you back is just starting. And you, the, the reason it, the reason that you have concocted this idea that I, I, I can't truly start is because I don't have enough time, and that's not true. Here's what I think is 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 the false narrative, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think okay. what's really going on is your brain is saying, I don't have enough time to do this the way that I eventually want to do it. Exactly. All right then. But that's nonsense. You're a mom. Tell me about one of your kids right now who's learning something new. Give me something. Uh, my five-year-old's learning how to swim. Oh, great. So let's take the first swim lesson that your five-year-old took. You remember it? Yeah. Okay. What if your five-year-old got out of the pool and goes, I don't want to do this anymore. And you said, why, honey? And he or she said, because I didn't swim all the way to the end of the pool and back. What would you say to him? Get back in that pool. Why? Because I, I know eventually she can make it there, but you just need to start somewhere. You would at some point I, I go, think- honey, <laughs> honey, after about five or six more lessons or three weeks from now, you're going to be able to do that. You would say, be patient, but you got to get in the pool and swim and keep learning. Then you'll be able to swim back and forth. You'd say something like that. Yes or no? Right. And yet right. and yet you're not doing that for yourself. So there is no possibility for you to ever make this a thing unless you start true or false. True. So you've created a narrative that says I can't start, I don't have time to start, and what you're really saying is I don't have time to put into it what I want this thing to be. And your problem is you're focused on the end result. And I love that about you. That's what's going to be needed to stay with it. But when you start, you have to take your eyes off the top of the mountain and look at the foot of the mountain, true or false. Yep. That's right. You got to look at the foot of the mountain. You're too busy looking at the top of the mountain and it's intimidating the crap out of you because you're going, how in the world am I ever going to have time to make it like this? But that's not how this works. Right. We start. By putting a current content out, testing it, getting feedback, polishing it, making it better, trying some different content. How does that feel to my audience? How does it feel to me? See, here's my number one tip to you. You actually have to write and put stuff out so that you get to a place where you begin to write the stuff that really moves you. And when you write stuff that moves you, meaning it's coming from your own stress and it's coming from your own journey and it's coming from truly your heart then there are going to be women who really resonate with that because you're sharing your heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. So here's the deal. This is going to take a long time. I'm going to be really realistic with you. To make this your full-time job, to equate your salary, which is what? What's your salary? Uh, North of $200,000. $200,000 on a blog? That's going to take time. That's a lot of readers. That's probably a podcast, some products to equal $200,000. So I'm not saying that to discourage you. I'm saying that to inspire you. You better get with it. The clock is ticking. So I listen, it is the blogging that will lead to the right product. So the longer you delay starting, the longer you delay profiting. That's your statement. I want you to write that on your mirror somewhere. The longer I delay starting, the longer I delay testing, the longer I delay reinventing, the longer I delay keep filling it out. And the end sentence is the longer I delay doing this full time, profiting from this to where I can do this. You got, you got it? Now listen, this is not an easy okay. journey, but I'm not the guy who, who does all the motivational speaker gibberish. But I'm telling you, you can do this, and you should do it. But time is a-wasting, and you better get after it. And your number one homework assignment is to write and post. Write 
and post. And I'm telling you, you have time. If you make time to write and post, and I would write from your life, you are your target audience, true or false. That's exactly true. All right, then. Then write from your life. And you have gobs of material all day long at the at work, in the car, at home. Sit down and write every night. But don't try to make it perfect. Make it personal. Whoo, that's good advice. Somebody ought to write that down. Our problem is we try to start something and make it perfect instead of make it personal. Now, every woman that peruses Katie's blog isn't going to go, oh, that's amazing. But enough women are going to go, that's me. Do you see the difference? I want customers who go, what Ken just said, I want them going, that's me. I don't need them going, oh, Ken's amazing. Please. I want them going, whew, Ken just said something. And that's me. That's where I'm at. It's not about perfection. It's about being personal. The more personal our products, our words, our services are, the more power they have. Make it personal. Because there are other people out there who are feeling what you're feeling, thinking what you're thinking, needing what you are providing, desiring what you can offer. It's not about perfection. It's about personalization. Hey, I got to get out of here. But before I do, I want to remind you, you matter and you do have what it takes. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube.